We are on the windy road to WWE Elimination Chamber, and then we go straight on to the chode to WrestleMania. But first, we got to talk about this show that took place in the Barclays Center, home of NXT TakeOver Brooklyn, an event that was certainly quite good and quite memorable. As for this show, hmm... Well, let's talk about it anyway. I'm Charles Renton with my review, WWE Raw from the Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York. The go-home Raw for Elimination Chamber. Sami Zayn will take on the Tribal Queef. And we get to hear the crowd go absolutely apeshit for Sami. And then want to destroy everybody when Sami doesn't win. My predictions for Elimination Chamber will come up, I don't know, probably Wednesday or Thursday. <sighs> Look, I know I've said ad nauseum at some points, and I've watched wrestling since War to Sell the Score 1985. Very, I've had varied times where I've loved wrestling, and I've watched it out of habit, and there's always been a mixture of that, because when you love something, you will watch it uh, through the good, through the bad, <clears throat> through the horrible, through the great, the throbbing adulation, the massive throbbing adulation that you just feel watching it. And then there are just times with Raw, NXT, SmackDown where there are good things that'll happen. You're like, holy shit, this is actually pretty good. Or, oh, wow, cool. This, it may, maybe doesn't feel spontaneous, but it feels like a little bit of chaos. You have to have controlled chaos, but you can't have chaos all the goddamn time. Otherwise, you're like the Attitude Era, where if you have nothing but chaos, then you have no chaos. You just have a mess. This show played it safe. There were a couple decent moments. Anyway, <clears throat> sorry enough, with Becky Lynch already in the ring, she gets a big pop. Adam Pierce is also here. He got booed. What did Adam Pierce do besides be Adam Pierce? I'm not really sure why he's getting booed. He's a fine authority figure. I'm not saying he's my favorite, but he's not that bad. Uh, shout out to Leiter for having my back. I'm sorry, and Be Becky's awesome. She really is, but <sighs> it's, I, I, it just Leiter. It's it's like hearing Taz say, you know, uh, uh, here comes the pain or <clears throat> yam bag or. All that, I don't know, it's just funny. She wants to fight her way into the chamber. Then here's Bailey. They jab back and forth. Bailey says she has successfully defended championships at Mania. And, uh, Becky says, well, I've main event at WrestleMania. And there you go. And then she made fun of Bailey being a peg leg last year. And, I mean, I'm sorry. That That's funny. That's funny. At least to me it is, because... I imagine that Becky and Bailey at this point in their lives and their careers would actually have, you know, enough of an understanding that we have to get something over and that they probably be like, okay, you know, it's better to ask for forgiveness and ask for permission. There you go. This was fine. Then Bianca shows up and Pierce is talking to Bianca and talk, listening to all them talk and says, Hey, here's an idea. Let's have a three-way. If oh my, if uh, Bailey or Becky win, then they're in the chamber, and that starts off with a triple threat. If Bianca wins, then neither of them are in the chamber. <laughs> and there you go. So we get a card rundown, and then we get Byron with Judgment Day without Rhea, at least without Rhea temporarily. Speaking of Judgment Day, Judgment Day, Priest and Balor, you know the good ones, the wrestlers, the ones that aren't embarrassments to the wrestling business, along with Dominic, who is an embarrassment to the wrestling business. I rewatched Super Brawl 3, by the way, and the comparison to Eric Watts actually is very apt, except Eric Watts knew when to get out of wrestling. So yeah, the Street Profits. We want mommy chance. Cool. I mean, they only got the Nets to cheer for. I guess I gotta do something. Same as it ever was. Same as it ever was. The Stomp pins <laughs> Dawkins. Okay. That's not a surprise. Dawkins taking the pin. And Dawkins has been doing well. I'm not knocking him. I'm not knocking forward. But Dawkins is going to be the one guy to take the pin. And then Edge and Beth show up. We get we get more fracas. And then we get Rhea coming back. Good God, Rhea. Good God. She's going to be an action movie star. She looks great. <laughs> Pierce then um, is in the ring. And Bork arrives. And then he says, I've already signed the contract, get Lashley out here. Lashley gets a bunch of security, gets his own table put there uh, on the stage. And they have a back and forth, a back and forth. They want him to death uh, because, again, Brooklyn only has the Nets to cheer for. They don't really have anything else to cheer for. Bobby scared, Bobby scared chance. This was fine. <coughs> um, we... This kind of felt a little, this felt at times all right, and then other times it just felt a little stagey, like we're trying to get to, like, 
j just get to Elimination Chamber to maybe just... I bet they just have them brawl, and then they go with a match at Mania. Like, just an ultimate blow-off. Submission or something, I don't know. Um, <clears throat> security gets laid out, and Bork gets speared um, in the entranceway area. This was all right, I guess. What well, wasn't all right was Mia Yim versus uh, Piper Niven. Mi Chin, Mia Yim. I mean, I, the DDT spike, oh, Piper's all right. Both these women can work. I just have no reason to care about them. And Piper wins with the Black Hole Slam. <clears throat> SmackDown recaps of the Usos reunion. Kathy Kelly. Jesus, Kathy Kelly. Triple H is the best resign, resigning. Uh, she cuts Barry Corbin off because Sammy is here, and then he says, I have something to say to Cody. So Cody makes his entrance. Manufactured presidential Cody Rhodes. I'm sorry, I know there are people that like Cody. And I'm not even saying that Cody's a bad guy, but nothing about his promos feel genuine. Do I believe he loved his dad? Absolutely. I mean, I'm, I'm not here to dispute that. And yes, it is pro wrestling, and it is something where I'm going to win the title for my dad. The title that my dad couldn't win. This is manufactured the same as it was in AEW. There's just more people watching. <laughs> more people watching WWE. There is no difference except taking away the entourage. There is no difference for how Cody's presented here and how Cody's presented Cody was presenting AEW. I'm sorry. And he, you know, he says, do you believe you can beat Roman Reigns? Sammy doesn't know. But then he's like, uh, you know, he's just all debating. Crowd's chain, you can do this. And Cody says, you know, <clears throat> um, this, you know, they, they believe in you. They actually believe in you. It's like, and then Michael Cole kept saying, finish the story, finish the story. And I will finish my story, but you need to finish yours. Oh, oh, four more years, four more years. I may be on a goddamn island when it comes to this Cody stuff. It is manufactured. It it just feels so, it, I, it, doesn't, feel, it doesn't feel genuine to me. I'm not saying that Cody is a terrible person. I'm not saying Cody hasn't worked hard. That pec injury, him coming back from that, that's tougher than a lot of people could ever hope to be. This is, the crowd, the, by the time Mania is done, the Raw after Mania is going to be, you know, kind of telling. Now, I'm not saying Cody's going to get booed right away. Sometime after Mania, he will. Because once he wins the title, yes, okay, he gets to honor his dad's legacy. He gets to win the title his dad never did. Tide's, tide's coming in, guys. It's going to wash over him. Other people will see that that, that guy's not very genuine. So, anyway. Um, he did say, you know, I don't want to see you on Raw next week. I want to see you at WrestleMania. And then Nikki, Nikki Grass, is talking to Carmella. And Candace shows up. Asuka shows up. I need Asuka to throw me through a brick wall. Um, why? Did they give Candace promo time? I don't understand it. I don't know why any of this is going on. As much as they featured the women, they didn't feature the women properly, yet NXT on a two-hour program, which, by the way, is one hour less than Raw because two is less than three, believe it or not. Count, the count on Sesame Street taught me that. Ah, ah, ah. But I, I do. back to Corbin. He says that Sammy won't beat Roman, that he's the last person to pin Roman, which is true. And Kathy Kelly, Jesus Christ. Corbin not, says that Cody had a minor injury or whatever. He can't stand. Cody can't stand. His brother can't stand his dad. And Cody has had enough. But then Cody's had enough. He starts marching him, but Corbin says he can't stand his dog. No, you don't talk about Pharaoh that way. How dare you? And they beat up. He beats up Corbin. They fight out there. Cody's in a suit and beats the shit out of Corbin and beats him in a match. But it's never personal with Cody. Like he said the Paul. Hypocrite. Whatever. You don't talk about Pharaoh that way. Um, but there are people that blame Corbin for the fact that that pairing with JBL didn't work. And I've been no fan of Corbin for the past few years. But Corbin's a smooth, safe worker that plays his role fine. Whether I like it or not. They shouldn't blame him for the thing with JBL because nobody wanted to see JBL. Nobody likes JBL. Do you think you do? 
Why? Why in 2023 would anybody like JBL? And Corbin, no, Corbin's probably never going to be any more than he is here. They're probably going to make him depressed rich Corbin. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I just, I don't, I don't think the Corbin should be blamed for this stuff with JBL. But it wasn't, it, <clears throat> so while it wasn't his fault, this wasn't particularly great, but it was Cody just getting a win on TV in, um, in um, suit pants. Liv, Raquel, and Natty are backstage. Liv, Raquel, and Natty took on Kana Asuka, <coughs> Kanaska, as it were. That should be her name. Nikki and Carmella. This was messy because uh, at one point later in the match, Asuka just decided, I'm going to lay out my tag partners, and now I'm just going to flatten Liv. And that was it. I mean, Liv didn't look bad in this match, but just, <coughs> I, I don't know. I, I, I don't think this match really served a purpose. It was just a hype up the chamber. Alpha Academy is here, and Otis, he accidentally uh, squirts in uh, Mansoor's face. Have I mentioned that the Maximum Male Models gimmick is one of the most embarrassing things ever, ever, that WWE has done? It's on par with being as bad as Eugene. That's how much it offends me, because it's taking talent and also whatever Maxine is. <clears throat> um, Sophia Cromwell, I believe was her name in NXT. I tried to put it out of my mind. She looks great. That's it, because they haven't given her anything else to do. That's basically all anybody has to go on. Why are, Why is this happening? Why are they trying to recruit Otis to this, and why is this on a wrestling program? This isn't a wrestling program. It's definitely not entertainment, and it's not sports. And this is stupid. This is bad, and creative should feel bad. They should fire the writers that came up with this stuff. Put them out in the goddamn East River for all I care. <clears throat> Speaking of being put out into the East River, who did Mustafa Ali, Mustafa Ali, sorry, who did Ali piss off? Because Bronson Reed beat him. Just threw him around, threw him into some chairs. That looked pretty deadly. Ali did get a nice DDT, but then got hit with the tsunami. <laughs> Recaps of the opening. Edge and Beth talk a bit. They're the grit couple. Grit maker, the record breaker. They got smiling grace and a lovely space, and then Edge slaps her ass. And she gives him sass. I don't know where I was going with that. Trying to do a Billy Graham quote. But unlike superstar Billy Graham, I actually, you know, have a heart. So Miz TV with Rollins and his big red boots. <coughs> what in the Karubo shoe for Mario 3 was Seth Rollins, Seth Pheasant Rollins wearing? What is the point of those boots? If that is considered fashion, whoever came up with those, they're, they're idiotic. What the hell are those boots? The hell are those? They talk about um, <clears throat> Logan Paul. Seth deserves better than this, is what I wrote down. Miz had to egg the crowd on to saying, I'm not stupid. Yes, you are. Theory then attacks, but then Seth manages to curb stomp Miz, but then Theory lays out Seth. Miz is laid out while Elias is talking to Rick Boogs. And then the Hurt Business, or or the remnants of the Hurt Business, MVP with Cedric and Shelton talking backstage like they've just been doing for the entire time. So Miz is still out. <coughs> Excuse me. Allergies, my apologies. Miz um, still laid out during the break. They had to move him to get the carpet out of the ring. And then Boogs beats Miz really quickly. And this match ended at 7.18 my time. Because I'm on the West Coast. 20 minutes later, they started the main event. <laughs> so, Chelsea, by the way, before that, wanted to speak to the manager. Look, this is the worst signing that they've done besides Hit Row and Cross. I I just I just don't see the point. I mean, is the point that she's just going to get the shit beat out of her? Because they already have women that can do that, called Dana Brooke or Carmella or half the women in NXT that haven't really served a purpose. I just don't get the point. Chamber hype. Bianca is backstage at 729. And then, yeah, 20 minutes between the end of Rick Boogs and Miz and this, and we have the start of the main event. Or at least roughly 20 minutes. I know it's a three-hour show, but this is ridiculous. Becky and Bianca and Bailey have a three-way match. Reminder, if Bianca wins, neither Becky or Bailey are in the chamber. If either Becky or Bailey win, then that person's in the chamber. Complicated? Yeah, pretty much. At least explain that way. 
It was well done at first, but then Dakota and Io interfere, and Io and Dakota instantly start fisting both opponents. Never mind. And then it gets messy later because we have everybody involved in the chamber get out there. We'll see you this weekend for the Royal Rumble, except that already happened a couple weeks ago. And Bianca gets a KOD, slamming Becky onto Bailey, and then pins Bailey one, two, three. So there you go. Here's what's going to happen. It's going to be Becky, Lita, and Trish against Damage Control at Mania. It's not happening in Montreal because the code is injured. So they're going to push it to that. And you know what? That's fine. That's fine. This show, however, was not fine. It wasn't terrible. It just wasn't great. So Elimination Chamber predictions will come up, I don't know, Wednesday, Thursday. I'm not waiting until after SmackDown because I ain't got time. Anyway, agree, disagree, what I said, like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Ricklin. I'll see you soon.